Hello there, and welcome to our video recap of Twin Peaks The Return, episode 11. There is fire where you are going. I'm William, and with me is... Sean. And we'll be discussing episode 11 of Twin Peaks The Return and everything that happened in it, and kind of going back through some of the prior predictions we had that were either proven or disproven in this episode. Uh, something that was proven, the episode started off with a couple of young boys playing baseball, and it was shot in a little bit of a weird way, too, because you saw, like, two kids, and then you saw a third kid because of the way they were going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then, like, there's all the different kind of angles and stuff, the kind of classic Lynchian type stuff. Um, but then we saw the character Miriam, who was attacked in the prior episode by Richard Horn, actually did survive and was able to crawl away. Yeah. Because uh, when he attacked her in the trailer, um, there was, like, a window that was busted out, so people, you know, speculated that that would be enough, that there would be enough gas that built up for it to actually blow up or you know, explode or catch on fire um, when he turned, when he looked like something lit in the stove on. And, and she was kind of breathing too. People picked yeah. up on that. And they said, you know, with Lynch being so particular, if if it was bad acting and she was supposed to be dead and wasn't, it wouldn't be there. So it's it would be intentional. Mm -hmm. Because even some of the wacky band performances that occur in the different shows or movies he's been involved in seem to be intentional. Um, just like a very, very specific thing he's going for. So Miriam's alive. Uh, we did not get to see any follow-up from that throughout the rest of the episode. We didn't get to see her um, get interrogated or questioned by the police. Some, somebody mentioned, what if Chad is the one that responds? Uh, yeah, which could be very bad. This working um, with um, Richard Horn. But uh, but also, too, like the letter thing. Like, if the letter was sent on that day, chances are it wouldn't have been delivered that day. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it, it might be a series of, of him, them, them both being incompetent um, yeah. as far as that situation goes. But one thing about Miriam, um, her left eye was messed up. Yeah. And, like, I saw some people point out that, um, uh, you know, we had Nadine, um, her eye, and then the, the body. Yeah. Um, the female head, that left eye was gone as well. Yeah. Um, so everybody's kind of thinking, okay, there's something to do with le the left eye. And there was, there's something along the lines of, um, I think, spiritualism and i don't know surrealism but i didn't look into it enough because i was started touching on it and then started reading about other stuff and of yeah. course forgot but uh something else i kind of thought about too was jacoby he has two different colored eyes and somebody the blue and red yeah somebody said in the secret history of twin peaks um he said it was like an experiment he was doing yeah to kind of uh enhance i guess the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain to work together better yeah to see uh i guess reality more clearly or whatever and apparently nadine he was going to do that experiment with her yeah but um you know she had her accident <laughs> yeah uh and Which... then two there's like one eye jacks um yeah. and then there's another somebody shared a gif of ben horn doing this with his left eye yeah i don't know if you, you remember something like that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's something with that and and could that be that like the left eye or you know, is that is that maybe like um, the woman who had the missing left eye? Was that a did she like glimpse you know the uh, spiritual world or the lodge or something? And that's yeah. why her eye was taken. Um, Nadine, is she suddenly have like even stronger power? You know what I mean? Is yeah. she kind of not? She was like out of sorts on reality, and is that because it has something to do with an alternate? Um, reality with her eye now or something so it's... yeah because we never saw nadine before the accident with her eye we only saw like the you know the show started you know supposedly years after that happened and two that's one of the things where the show in secret history twin peaks the book gave different accounts of how nadine lost her eye um which was interesting so it's like which is the canonical version because it's obviously something that's being done on purpose to give you a different and, version and and her character you know as soon as you know when we saw her in the series i think from the start you know she's complaining about you know uh big ed like you know hanging drapes or doing something yeah and and that's very much how uh season three sheriff truman um how his wife comes in at first and yeah. she's the same type of um kind of nagging personality but then we find out there's a reason behind that yeah so it's like you know was there something behind nadine before and that totally changed her personality yeah um there's all the stuff that goes on with her like <laughs> being stuck in like the did, teenage mode during did, the original did, run wait did big ed didn't he accidentally shoot her eye out yeah so the 
the story, at least from the show, was mm-hmm. that they're hunting yeah. and he accidentally shot her eye out. Um, so, I mean, I think, like I said, the secret is with Twin Peaks. I'm blanking on now what it was, but the description there was a little bit different. Huh. And there was, like, one or two other things like that, too, where Did, it's... Yeah, I mean, is that, like, an almost an alternate alternate reality or... You know what I mean? Like, something else because um, that it's, book, obviously, was detailed all of the stuff about the lodges and everything. Yeah, so that's not to go back and look into. I mean, I don't know if it plays any significance in anything yeah. so far, but... Um, then we also see where Becky, uh, the character played by Amanda Seyfried, um, is on the phone with somebody about Stephen or Steve, her husband, or whatever. And then she goes, uh, she has a gun, and then she calls her mom Shelley to come get her. And then she goes kind of crazy and kind of steals her car. And then Shelley jumps in the hood throws and she her throws off. her off, and then goes off. I was like. Oh God! Please don't let Shelley die. At that moment, yes. I was like, "Oh no!" Like that was actually a pretty tenseful moment, even though it was, you know, kind of ridiculous and funny in certain ways too. Well, it was very melodramatic and typical, typical Lynch fashion. Yes, yes, but at the yeah. same time, there was real danger for a character that you had the connection to from the original show, and then who you know, so you automatically have connection on this show, and you feel like you're just now starting to see more of her now. You yeah, know, you just with that scene much. alone, you're like, "Okay, great, we're getting some good Shelley." And I'm like, "Are they gonna kill her off now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then, you know, she gets a ride from Carl at the Fat Trout with his, Park. With his magical whistle, which his whistle. was uh, incredible. Somebody pointed out, too, he is almost always there, or he has been when tragedy strikes. Yeah. And he's almost like a, a good force of the White Lodge, maybe. You know, not literally, but as far as he's always, like, consoles people and well, stuff. if there was, like, a light side him. and dark side, he's light side yes. aligned. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so then Becky goes to the... Goes to this um, apartment complex, apartment complex, and uh, knocks on the door, and a woman tells her nobody's there, so she shoots the door, and that was at Gersten Hayward's apartment. So she was the younger sister of Donna Hayward, and seeing seeing her again. So she was with Becky's husband, yeah, Stephen. There's just like a quick shot of them like looking up, listening. Somebody said too, the woman who answered apparently was. Somebody in the love boat. I don't know. <laughs> you know it's like... so, you, so you have Becky kind of going off the deep end and shooting a door. And then you have a scene with her at the diner um, sitting on the same side of the do- sitting on the same side of the booth as her mom, as Shelly. So we do get verification that she mm-hmm. is the daughter of Shelly and Bobby. And then Bobby shows up. Because um, on like Carl, when he can't use the magic whistle and gets the van, takes Shelly back to the diner. And on the way there, he uses like a CB to call the police dispatch and to tell that he has Shelly Briggs with them. And they get a hold of Bobby. And then we also see the scene with like the switchboard operator taking all mm-hmm. the different calls. So we're, we have to assume it has something to do with the gunshots and then maybe to do with Miriam being found by the young boys. Yeah. Which, you know, we don't get any follow up on that, but. And, and maybe the town going a little crazy because so much, so many a lot of stuff wild happens things happen <laughs> yeah, right after this diner scene. And then you have, so in the diner you have, you know, the discussion around it where Bobby kind of just says, you know, like, Stephen, you know, the only reason he hadn't busted him yet because he thought he was trying to turn things around. And then, you know, if he lays, his, if he lays a hand on Becky or hits her or gets caught with drugs, he's going to take him down. So, you know, Bobby still seems to be a good character, a good guy who, yeah. you know, but it's funny because, like, in that scene, it kind of lays out the relationship. They're on, you know, like, Bobby and Shelly are on different sides of the booth with um, Becky sitting on the same side as Shelly, not Bobby. And during their discussion, um, Red shows up, and then Shelly gets googly-eyed and leaves the diary and goes and, like, kisses him and stuff. So it shows that she still has a penchant for the bad guys, for the bad boys. And so, back to Bobby real quick. Like, I think that scene is awesome. Like, that felt like typical you know traditional twin peaks like even just yeah. major briggs setting bobby down you know yeah. what i mean in the booth and talking to him and stuff like i love that scene it was great seeing those two characters or gave another big moment at the um double r diner yes yeah and bobby's perform i mean his performance too has been great yeah dana season. ashbrook like the actor that portrays bobby like i think it's probably at the direction of lynch because mm-hmm. in the original series he was a very melodramatic character that was much more like 50s almost like stage play type stuff mm-hmm. compared to the other people that gave more you know television or film oriented performances and in this series you know he's better as an actor i think and just being you know directed to be more of the straight man 
and more similar to somebody like you know the original like Harry Truman, Sheriff Truman from the original series, because he's playing a little bit more like that type of character. So I mean, it does look like the major like Major Briggs's prediction has come true, and he's like a good person, mm-hmm. and he's realized you know what he can do. So you know, he's gone from being a character that you know like before he's shot this like from the original series one of my least favorite characters killed and somebody of, in the movie yeah in the movie <laughs> killed somebody and it, one of the characters that, like a lot of times in the original series i'll be like oh especially like the stuff with like leo and and shelly played up for comedy but in this series one of my favorite characters yeah. so i like him on screen i always i always liked him i mean i because i just liked you know that kind of anytime there was a scene involved with him it was like he was a lot of times pissed off he had a lot of energy, you yeah. know, in that series. Like whether or not you know he was like annoying or whatever. Like he was always just well, like, him and uh, him and Mike barking he, at um, James. Yeah, early. yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff like that with him in the original series. Like this in this version of the series, he's been a character that's you know a force for good, mm-hmm. and that a character that anytime I see him on screen, I get excited yeah. because I like to see where his arc is going. So you get you get confirmation of Becky's you know parentage. Um, so the red stuff too, I think he kind of points at her and I don't remember, did, um, Miss Tremon, did that, did her grandson, does he point at somebody? Does he point at Leland Palmer and Firewalk with me? I don't know. I don't I, remember. I don't know. But anyway, um, so, you know, we don't know who red is yet. He does some magical stuff. Yeah. With Richard um, Horn. He's involved in the drug trade. Yeah. Um, you know, I think people have brought up like, oh, is it? Miss Truman's grandson, possibly, you know, that, that younger um, boy that was played by, I think, Riley Lynch, David Lynch's son in the original series, a different kid yeah. in the movie. Um, so I was kind of looking up, I think, more about uh, Miss Truman's grandson, too. And do you remember the scene in Firewalk with me whenever Leland Palmer backs out of, uh, let me find my notes real quick. He had that date set up with um, Teresa Banks, and then he saw Laura and Renette in the hotel. Uh, vaguely. So anyway, he sets up like a date, basically. You know, yeah. um, that's when he's you know gonna go with him or something, and he he backs out of it because he sees Laura, and he's leaving the hotel complex, and then Miss Truman's grandson comes out, and he's wearing that mask like the jumping man. It's a little bit like that, and he's jumping around the parking lot. Um, this may be totally unconnected, but uh, Miss Tremon and her grandson used a fake name or a different name in the trailer park from Firewalk yeah. with Me because they used to live there, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I happen to just notice that the the um, the hot- the motel that Leland was at was called Red Diamond City Motel. Yeah. So could this be Miss Tremon's grandson taking on another name? kind of another identity too because they did that before you know yeah and he had that magical powers kind of the the grandson did and they said like he practices magic or whatever you know um so i could see that possibly like the age stuff but like if it's like to do with magic or whatever yeah and they were they were agents of the lot black lodge i think or whatever so it's like um he could take on another form or something like that but that was just something i was looking at the, the grandson and i happened to notice like oh he was in that scene, and it was the red, um, whatever, red, red Diamond City Motel. And I thought that was really interesting yeah. that that just happened to be in the Wikipedia, and his name is just Red. Like, yeah. <laughs> and they've and they've used other identities before, um, so that was like one thing that pointed out. And like, does he have a spell on Shelley, or is it just well, her going for the bad boys again, and not, you know, not kind of knowing what, knowing that. It's a bad decision. You know, Norma, she already still seems like that she's almost a child because she calls Norma first and is like, Norma, what should I do yeah. whenever Becky runs away? Um, so is it the fact that, yeah, she's making bad decisions still and that's just kind of her fate? Or is it the fact that maybe he's kind of got a spell on her or something? You know? Yeah, I mean, it could also be involved with the drugs somewhat because we don't know, like, the drugs being peddled, like, do they have a connection to the lodge? Is there mu- more to it than just being a drug? And, and, and like, this is not, I'm not trying to be critical at all, but she, and this, I don't know how she looks in other series. I haven't seen her in Riverdale or anything, but, I mean, she has bags under her eyes. Yeah. Is that intentional? Is that just, you know, an age thing? Um, um, or, or do they leave that there to kind of... Maybe she still is into drugs a little bit, you know. I don't know, because um, like I saw, she was on American Horror Story Hotel, mm-hmm. I think. Terrible show. I hate, I hate that season. <laughs> um, but I just watched it just as a masochist and to discuss on our our podcast. But 
I mean, I think she looked good there. I mean, I think she looks good here. Yeah, I, I think she does too, but I just noticed she has bags under her eyes. And yeah, it may just be an I age mean, thing. It but could be too, like, that she's working, like, the diner and has, yeah. like, a breast in life. But, and, or also, could it be drugs a little bit? Yeah, you know so what I mean? Don't like, really have any more to go on than just idle speculation. But, I, I wouldn't have brought that up if yeah. it wouldn't have been for possibly, you know, Red obviously is involved in the drug trade, but yeah. she's, like, smitten with him. Like yeah. she was when she ran away with Bobby to in the, the opening scene of the, the first episode. To the annoyance of Bobby and Becky, seemingly. Mm -hmm. um, then you have, like, the gunshot that goes through the window, which is, like, a young boy where there was a gun in the car, and the young boy, like, set it off, and it goes through the windshield of their car and through the Double R Diner. And then you kind of see Bobby looking and seeing, like, the dad wearing, like, camo and stuff, and the kid wearing camo and stuff. So, like... The kid having uh, mannerisms kind of mimic the dad. Mm -hmm. And there's the car behind him and that he's, keeps honking. he's staring at him, too. Like, almost like Miss Tremon's grandson, where he's just, like, creepily... I mean, it may just be a, a It's kind a of a thing. Lynchian thing. Yeah, and... he's just looking at him with this stance, just, like, kind of leaning across. And somebody said, you know, was that intentional to stop traffic? Was this, like... Is this helping some force? Um, or was it red... Maybe trying to get Bobby shot at. Who knows? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like after, yeah. you know, I don't know. Shelly was still in there, but, uh, but yeah. Because you see, um, so then like Bobby's dealing with that, and then like backup shows up, and is that where he, um, the officer that shows up mentions something about Big Ed's gas? He said he was at Big Ed's gas farm and he heard yeah. shots. So apparently it's pretty close because he just ran, yeah, right over there very quickly. So the or means, there's like a weird time thing, yeah. You know, so we'll see Big Ed because he was in like there was like the Everett McGill or the actor that played Big Ed was in some of the promo stuff. So I'm and, assuming he'll show and up. And I've seen somebody already post. I don't dig into IMDb, but they post it. Oh, it says he's gonna be in this episode. You know what yeah. I mean? So we don't have. You know, we're over halfway done now, but... Uh, for episode 11 of 18. <laughs> but, but yeah, so the lady is freaking out uh, in honking the car, screaming, saying... You know, she's honking the whole time, and she actually is in a wreck. So it's not like she's just stuck in traffic. So that's your first clue, and she does not stop. Um, and so she's freaking out, and she says, we have to get home to dinner. Um, his uncle's there. He hasn't seen him in a long time, or she hasn't seen him in a long time. Um, and then the little girl, like, starts... Vomiting. Vomiting up this black kind Almost of stuff. Almost a zombie yeah. looking. Yeah, that definitely made me say, what the hell? And normally I'm pretty composed because we see so many weird things in yeah. the series. Like, I looked at my wife and was like, what in the hell was that? And then, like, Bobby's just kind of looking and the woman's screaming. Yes. Um, so, somebody else brought up the fact that possibly, you know... Things are kind of going to hell in Twin Peaks right now, it seems like. Um, maybe it's because it's getting closer to the date that uh, Major Briggs like put the on day, the piece of the paper. the day after tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and two, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It seems like a lot of things are converging right now. Um, but were they trying to get to some place? Are, are, are there people in Twin Peaks being drawn kind of um, to the Black Lodge or to, to these places? Or is it like uh, Ghostbusters 2 or the negativity of the town yes, is exactly. getting into the negative energy it, and giving power to the yeah, dark forces? Exactly. Um, so, uh, so I heard a thought that possibly that the gunshot was actually a way to stop traffic and to kind of stop some of those things from happening. I don't know. But anyway, she says something along the lines of we have to get, you know, to dinner on time. And which also kind of maybe calls back to the text that Mr. C sent and that Diane got from Mexico or whatever that said the conversation around the dinner table is lively. Yeah. Um, so that maybe links to maybe the lodge. Um, you know, it's... A lot of weird stuff is happening now. Obviously, we're going to get some answers that may not be spelled out all the way, but it sounds like the there's a book description now of the final dossier. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like that is going to give a more clear um, explanation of some of these things, which I think yeah. is a good way to handle it because Mark Frost obviously seems like the guy who is orchestrating a lot of the uh, nuts and bolts of, you know what I mean, the uh, kind of... Well, the procedural aspect of the show and yes. more of the traditional storytelling. And, and Lynch maybe is interested in that, but not always wanting to go, wanting to tackle it head on. So it's a good balance as far as like Lynch can handle the show yeah. and leave things obscure and still have a reason behind them and not seem like it's totally just thrown together. So Lynch has episode eight and then Frost has yeah. some of these more, <laughs> even though like a lot of them are like written directed by David Lynch, yeah. like you, you have to figure that 
that Frost has a hand in it too, because some of the more because if it was just pure unadulterated heroin Lynch, you might get something more like Inland Empire, where there's not much narrative structure at all, as opposed to this show, and even episode eight provided narrative purpose. That it's not that hard to see how it plays into some of the elements. Now, some of the stuff is still unknown. Yeah, and it may, like, Lynch may leave that unknown, even though there's a reason, but then Frost will have a, an outlet to explain those things in yeah. that book. You know what I mean? Which is, could make it all more interesting. Yeah, so then the next thing we get, like, a big thing we get is when you have um, Gordon Cole, Albert, Tammy, and Diane go with Hastings, that one detective, to where Hastings uh, met Briggs. And Gordon kind of gets to see, like, into this vortex and sees the woodsman. Uh, and you see a woodsman kind of sneaking around the, perif- the periphery of the, the area they're at. Uh, and then the woodsman is able to sneak up. Diane sees the woodsman and doesn't want really to do anything to stop it or warn anyone. And he crushes in Hastings' head. Um, but while they're doing that, you know, Albert's able to pull Gordon back before anything happens mm-hmm. with him looking into the vortex. And Diane also sees another woodsman. Um, and it was also pointed out that so when Cole and Albert see the one woodsman walk kind of from the back of the building, like by a storage container and disappear, yeah. um, they say something like there's one over there. We don't know if it's there's they mean they know there's a vortex there because they say woodsman or they're just saying, hey, there's a yeah. woodsman, you know. But anyway, they start doing the vortex stuff. Uh, it was also pointed out that Albert's hands um, move. Um, in a very odd way, an unnatural way. Somebody kind of like zoomed in yeah. and it seemed like it was on a loop where Albert's jacket, because the way Albert moves, it's like a loop. Yeah. But like, it's almost like it's an anima- animated arms. Yeah. Not, even though that could be just, oh, they want it to change things or whatever. Well, like when you watch um, this show, it's really hard sometimes to know, like, because I've been watching it streaming on the app. I don't actually have cable. So it's like, okay, is this like a connectivity issue or is it like a feature of the show? Yeah, yeah. When there's stuff that happens with motion or things that could be stuttering in the video image. Um, so they see the woodsman before that. They see the woodsman go from like behind that building to the storage unit. Yeah. And Diane also sees one um, that does the same thing. Uh, some people pointed out that what she sees is it seemingly on the other side of the building. But what it really is, it's a mirror image of that same scene. Yeah. So it is flipped, and the container is actually also color corrected a darker blue. Um, so that like opens up things like is Diane a doppel Diane? Is she seeing yeah. a mirror version of the world? Because we see a shot of her, and then we do the um, you know the Hitchcock like okay, we see her reaction, and then we see her point of view, and her point of view is in fact mirrored. Yeah. Um, so because I mean, there's like speculation, that, like Gordon with like the smoking thing is doing a test because she might be a doppel Diane. Um, and something else about that too, somebody brought up that Major Briggs was always, um, uh, always on Bobby saying you must not smoke. Yeah. So does he know something about smoking yeah. in the lodges? Which is also like there's so many awesome things about this show yeah. that like even if you never hear that there's any confirmation. Like, there's so much, like, world building well, in, in this. the show, Gordon stopped smoking. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And so you have that. And then, um, and then too, so Gordon and Albert find the body of Ruth, who had the coordinates written on her arm that Albert takes a picture of. Um, so you, they find that body, and then William Hastings gets his head blown up. <laughs> and, like, the funniest... And then Gordon Cole. <laughs> like, it's probably one of the funniest moments in the series. He's like, you know, top 20. Yeah. Because there's a lot, but maybe top 10. He just looks and he's like, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. So, it's one of those things, too, where Gordon seems to, in that scene, have almost no <laughs> hearing issues whatsoever. And, and which is interesting to see, like, how much he plays it up and yeah. things like that. But, yeah, but when he walked up... <laughs> And saw the exploded head of Hastings, and he's like, he's dead. Like, <laughs> like he's just pointing out what everybody obviously knows. I don't know. It's just so, and he like has like kind an of innocence toned, about it, and it's like almost tone deaf, yes, like yeah. speech delivery. <laughs> like so, just so everybody knows, he is he's in fact dead. So you have like him, you have like some some stuff with Albert that's been pure comedy gold. Yes, about like Gene Kelly and all that stuff. Yes. So you have all that stuff. Um, but then, like, you know, not to get too far out of chronological order, but, like, later when they're back at the detective station and they're sitting there and they get coffee and donuts and they have Diane in the room, um, and then the other detective comes back and, and Diane seems really anxious, really nervous, and really looking to smoke and doesn't really seem to be able to, you know, she's very impatient about it. 
Uh, and then Albert shows Gordon a picture that has the coordinates mm -hmm. on the arm, and he notices Diane looking. And my interpretation of the scene was based on the prior episodes. They discussed like they got the text message logs that were going to Diane, so she's coordinating with somebody. Like I think that Gordon and Albert were onto her and very suspicious. So I'm thinking those are false coordinates that point to some location they're going to monitor and then see who shows up. Yeah, is it a trap? I mean, because too, this show isn't. You know, the way they handle the show, some TV shows or media, they will let the characters do some dumb things yeah. just for uh, just for story just purposes. for story purposes to get from point A to point B e more easily. And this, they don't take those easy routes. You know what I mean? They yeah. always their characters are if they need to be smart, they're very smart. And so it's it's not like they're just doing this and like Oh, what is she looking at? And they're just gonna like let that happen, like. Well, since they were already suspicious yes, of her because yeah. of the text messages and just ge in general, and then you have the element of he noticed her looking. I would have to think those were not the real coordinates. So it's either false coordinates, so they can then see who she's communicating with, or maybe it is the real coordinates, and they just are gonna once again just have it monitored and see where. I would think it'd be false because I think they would understand the danger of what they're dealing with, or at least Gordon should. And then seeing like the woodsman and stuff, I think we have to give them even more insight into they're dealing with some strange forces. Um, and do they bring up the fact that the coordinates, was it those coordinates, right, that are represent, they said a small town in north uh, and west cut, and, and then it cuts, cuts off. Out. Yeah, so, so northwestern Washington, maybe, you know, it's yeah. Twin Peaks probably. And then, yes, yeah, so you have that. So they, they don't tell you exactly what the location is and they could be false coordinates. I'm sure somebody's already looked up based on the picture what the coordinates are which I did not do because I'm lazy and was tired. But um, then you also get the conversation that's happening with Hawk and Truman. And they have, um, Truman was just looking on the computer and just did a search of the coordinates that they got from the pieces of paper from that, from the message from Major Briggs and said that, you know, he had found like on the map where the location went, he said there's no roads that go there. And then Hawk shows him a cloth map he has that he says is always current. It's a living map. It's yeah. a living map and it's always current. And it has some representations on there. Basically, there he asks what this one symbol is that we've seen on Twin Peaks a number of times. He's like, oh, you don't want to know. It's it's the almost like the round dot with the little ears. Yeah. Um, I think somebody said that possibly represents the creature from the atomic blast that spits out Bob, mother or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, there was something else with that too. Uh, now I can't seem to find it, but, um, uh, somebody said that somebody drew the point of whenever, uh, David Bowie, David Bowie's character, what is his name? Philip Jeffries. Philip Jeffries comes back on Firewalk with me. He says something along, along the lines of, we're not going to talk about Judy. Hawk says, don't ever ask about that. Yeah. Almost like, don't talk about that. So is that represent Judy? You know, is it yeah. the mother character? You know, is that the same thing? Maybe not, but, yeah. um, you know, there's like a million parallels in this show. And sometimes yeah. it is just parallels for the sake of, you know, they, he likes building parallels and things. And But yeah. um, but that could be well, and they Judy. And they basically lay out, too, that, like, there's, like, blackened corn that represents death. So that could be kind of the Garbanzia stuff um, of, you know, representing death and suffering and human suffering. Um, and, and then something else with the corn, too. Somebody else with a keen eye point out that there's like a hand symbol there. Yeah. And I think the hand means like um, essentially uh, wounded or, or killed or something. Yeah. Um, and if you like, you know, remember in grade school to make turkeys, you drew hands a lot of yeah. times. <laughs> Somebody else pointed out the fact that in Fire Walk With Me, there's a scene with Laura and James when um, she says... Uh, she says she's gone. She's like a turkey in the corn. Yeah. And James, it's like kind of the beginning, I think. And James says, you know, you're not a turkey. It's one of the dumbest animals. And then she goes, gobble, gobble. And starts yeah. crying. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. But turkey, that's the turkey is right there in the corn. So yeah. is that is that is that drawing parallels that aren't there? But again. And then, um, and then Margaret, the log lady, calls mm -hmm. and tells them where you're going. There is fire. Or, or, or yeah. paraphrasing that. But, I, yeah, I think essentially that's what she said. Or she says, uh, there's fire where you are going. 
So it sounds like they're gonna be going into the Black Lodge. Yeah, is fire and, the activity? You know, you know they, they are they gonna about fire the walk? Yeah, with me, <laughs> uh, not with me, but with somebody. <laughs> but yeah, so like, I mean, so you know, Truman and Hawk are gearing up to go, and I'm assuming Bobby will go with them too because he's the one that talked about the Jagrabbit's palace. Um, and and speaking of Margaret too, again the. Um, with the with I forgot to bring it up earlier, but with the little girl being sick and the car throwing up, yeah, it seems like um, people in Twin Peaks are kind of getting sick. Margaret, yeah. Ashley Judd's husband, who we're yeah. like, why are we why are we yeah. seeing this guy has you know uh, is sick? Sheriff um, Harry and Truman, the, and then Sher- yeah, and then uh, Harry Truman. So there is a sickness coming over Twin Peaks, and it if all that is related to even that little kid, it seems like it is getting much worse as we're getting closer to this date, possibly. Yeah, so you so you get the stuff with, like, the map, and, you know, they're kind of gearing up to go there, and they talk about there's no roads. So, you know, they're going to be right in the heart of it. And, you know, that just harkens back to early on in the original series when Cooper said if he ever went, went missing, he'd want Hawk to be one that they sent to find him. Mm-hmm. So that's going to come full circle. And hopefully... And then, like, um, like the log lady, Margaret, said her log was afraid of fire... Or didn't like fire, mm-hmm. so that because you know, like her, the the her husband who passed away in a fire, spirit supposedly is like in the log or involved with the log or whatever. So that that all just ties back into stuff. So you know, if you read the secret history of Twin Peaks, then she has connections to the woods and different things going back years. So you know, a very important character in that mm-hmm. universe who's much more serious now than I think her original appearances on the TV show were in like season one. Where she, you know, tells Cooper that her log has a message and stuff like that. So she's played much more serious, and Hawk reveres her, and you know, uh, tells her like, "Oh, I should have called and told you that I found with the clues that you gave me, like found information." So. And then, and for some reason too, the officer that was at the scene that said, "Oh, was it Big Ed's gas farm? I heard shots." He pops in too and, tell, and says, tries to tell um, Truman about his new car. Yeah, somebody said they they thought that he reminded him of kind of Jack Nance and a little bit of his delivery, and it's like. <laughs> You know, just bringing up odd stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I don't know necessarily what is there's a what is up with that. Somebody line. said, "Oh, it's you know, there's a time, there's a, some time differences going on or whatever." Um, but they kind of laid out that it's later in the afternoon because we had that scene in between of, I guess that scene in between was the daytime. But anyway, it's maybe it's just later on. But then again, like if Big Ed's gas farm isn't right there and he heard gunshots, like is there? There's just something weird about that. You know what yeah. I mean? There's weird. It's weird that he was placed in both those scenes and seemingly uh, not essential to giving you any information you had to know. Yeah. You know, he didn't really play an important role in those scenes. No, I mean, like in so, the station, he literally just kind of interrupted for a second. And, and when he helps Bobby, but he's just like, oh, just take care of that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Bobby that, just doesn't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, it, it didn't means. really change the course of Bobby's actions or any information we were given at that point of time. So. Yeah. It's very interesting. Those were nearly back to back there, um, with that same character in kind of odd uh, situations. When yeah, yeah, it's weird. And then we also get some other stuff. So there's like the Dougie Cooper stuff, where Cooper or Dougie, um, his boss, um, tells him that you know there was a mix up, and he's able to uncover that there actually something that the Mitchums like a fire was listed as an arson, but it actually wasn't. It was an accident. So their insurance policy will pay out. They had an insurance policy taken out against that policy, so they get paid out too. So it's not going to bankrupt them to pay out this $30 million policy. Do, um, do you think he found out about the extra policy and then thought, oh, maybe we'll just take advantage of this? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Could that have been the only thing that turned him, or is he turned because he's talked to them and there's threats? Yes, so or... there's, it's unclear. Well, it's funny too because like when, he gets, when Dougie gets called into his office— the um the one like assistant in the office like has the coffee that yes. he's following yeah and that's well, that's the, what I thought I saw Dougie like hauling ass outside the window I'm like yeah. oh is he like more normal now no, he's got but then coffee. I saw him yeah he was like <laughs> so there's the coffee thing so then he gets um, then you see the Mitchum brothers and they're talking about how like um I believe it's Bradley Mitchum is the um Jim Belushi. Car- Jim Belushi character and they're talking like how he can't even he can he can't even wait to kill Dougie. And and he had a dream about killing him. And he had a dream about it. Um, and then... there, so, There's a long scene, too, of his brother eating cereal. Yeah. Somebody pointed out that he's eating something like Corn Pops or Captain Crunch or something, which is corn-based yeah. cereal. And uh, Belushi 
said he couldn't even eat and his was like raisin bran which i maybe is still corn i guess it would be like flakes but anyway there was like something yeah you know it was they obviously hung on his brother eating the cereal well for they a had while. like the name brand cereals too which is yeah. interesting that it's not so it's for a specific purpose and and lynch i watched a video recently and it's like maybe like a 10 second video and it's somebody asking lynch like you know what are your thoughts on um, product placement and stuff, and he basically just says, you know, fuck it, or something like <laughs> that. He's like, I, I, you know, if I could hate it or something along those lines. So it doesn't seem like... I don't think it, like I don't yeah. think that was a product place. I think it was more yeah. of a using brands people yeah. are aware of to, dis- to show you different personality traits between the characters yeah. and, uh, and the other things. Um, so then Dougie, before he gets in the limo to go meet the Mitchum brothers, to give him the check, which is odd that they wouldn't tell them they had good news beforehand. They just kind of... The boss kind of sent Dougie with the check and made the assumption that it wasn't the Mitchum brothers because it wasn't an arson so that they weren't involved in the assassination mm-hmm. attempts on his life. Um, but he also doesn't know about the Mr. Jackpot's stuff. Yeah. But, um, and he easily wrote it off like, oh, it's not them. They're not involved at all. Like, yeah, yeah, that whole thing is weird because he was so much on the defensive of Dougie in the police station and so stuff like that. You know, he does, seemed like he's always been in his corner. Is there more going on behind the scenes with him? Is Did he get the money signs in his eyes when he saw the insurance policy? Like, who knows? We'll probably find out more. But when Dougie goes to see the Mitchums, on the way there, Bradley Mitchum talks about he had a dream and how his brother's wound was healed. So he pulls the bayonet off and it's healed. And then they get there. Um, and then when the limo gets there, Dougie, when they have like the Leaving Las Vegas, that's like as rendition is playing as Dougie's in a limo. Yes, yeah. And he got the box. He went into some store and got a box because he saw the one armed man, um, uh, sh- like beckoning him to the shop. So he had this box when he got in the car. You don't know what's in the box. And the scene, like, there's a later, it kind of plays at like seven, like, what's in the box? Yes, yeah. But it was. And, and you're waiting to figure out, like, what does Dougie have? I'm sure it's probably not anything big, but the scenes, too, on the strip that they're showing, they show him driving in one direction away from the main strip, and then they also show another part of the strip. Yeah. It's it's maybe just the way the shots were organized. Yeah. But, again, with the show, you never know. Kind Most of, things seem to be intentional. Yeah, yeah. And um, so then, like, um, Brandley Mitchum, like, references the dream again and says that if, some, if this one thing is in the box that he's an ally and they shouldn't kill him. And then, of course, when he goes over and looks at the box, and he tells me just a cherry pie, <laughs> he opens the box, and it's a cherry pie. <laughs> so then they go and pat down Dougie and find the check for $30 million. And the best piece of acting Jim Belushi's done in years is when he like has the look of pure like joy on his face <laughs> because of this check. And he's kind of like dancing around a little bit. I'm trying to come back around on Jim Belushi so because, then, according to Jim, yeah, was rough, man. I did not like... When that show happened to be on the TV, but you know, I've tried to give him a chance on this, and yeah, he has not, you know, he is he has not done, he's not made one misstep on this show yeah. to make me like, you know, take back giving him any chance. Well, like, yeah, he's kind of like this aloof, like wants to kill him super bad, but he had this dream, yeah. and dreams are a big, important part of Twin Peaks. So then, you, you know, you have where they realize that Dougie's like an ally. And then, you know, you don't have the what's in the box end with a killing. It ends with a friendship. And they take him to a restaurant um, and have him, you know, served all kinds of cherry pie. And then they have the girls come in, including Candy, who still is acting off. And And she um, says there's a lot of traffic on the strip. Just so many cars. Um, And she also kind of stares off in in an odd direction. Yeah. That, you know, I don't know if Cooper does or not, but... It very much like you know, Dougie Cooper yeah. like um, kind of mannerisms and stuff and, yeah. and aloofness. But at the like same time, not at people with, yeah, to the side. But at the same time, and... she seems like she's cute. She's like a little bit more advanced than he is. Yeah, um, she has a little bit more awareness than him. Uh, so yeah, the cherry pie saved Coop's life. Somebody else again pointed out that. The shop he went in was, I don't know the name of it. It's apparently the name of a singer who had passed away or, or a, a musical artist. Um, but it's that's the name of the the store that the one-armed man waved him into. Yeah. And it's like got two Zs. Well, in the Black Box episode, like I guess in the first one, yeah. um, the coffee that she brings him, I think has those two Zs on it. And I guess maybe when he was out in the lobby talking to her about the coffees, that's maybe when um, 
Cooper, maybe a pass yeah. through it real quick. So they said something along the lines along the lines of, "Oh, this this place was used twice to save Cooper. Once with the cherry pie, once with that. At least stop yeah. him from being spotted." Yeah, you know. So again, something weird. Um, one other theory about Cooper. It's a very long theory. I don't know if this was on Reddit or where. I think it was on Reddit. Um, essentially, they break down. I'm sure you could probably find it. It says something like, "Please read." how Cooper's going to come back or whatever. So the purple room um, that he goes to before he comes into, comes out electrical sockets. Yeah. Um, I guess somebody in there has a watch and it has the time of like October 1st, 253 or something. Yeah. Which I think may be the date that they are supposed to go to well, that place. Be, it said 10, one and 10, two. Yes. And so like I, two, I five, think three it was, shows up a bunch. I think it was 10, one, but in the timeline of the show, they had like backdated it and it was like the, uh, uh, September 26th or something along the lines. Yeah. 2016. Um, there, this theory, a lot of things get explained, but essentially it is that um, he has split off and, and and maybe that we're seeing some of those scenes later. Anyway, he has split off his mind because his mind and where he was at was in the future. He has split off in the past. So when he catches up to that date... Yeah. His mind will catch. His body will catch up to where his mind is. Yeah. Which his mind didn't go back to five or six days. Only his physical form did. Yeah. So he may catch back up, and that's when he'll snap out of it at that time. Yeah. So it could be at the time that he goes into the lodge, or that they go into the lodge, and maybe he snaps out. Somebody else. Uh, I think part of the same theory is that they will go into the lodge at that time. Yeah. And when they go in, that is what time it is in the lodge. That is right after Cooper leaves to go out of electrical sockets. Yeah. But he left behind his shoes and his pen. They will get his shoes and his pen and bring it out and that will help him come back or something. Yeah. There's a there's a I mean it's a great theory. Yeah. And it's really cool to see the connections made and kind of um the way he set some things up. Maybe it's not at all true, but maybe it is. But yeah. um we're getting closer to that date and it's we, but we see glimpses all the time yeah. because when the music starts playing too, yeah, he kind of looks up and you kind of see that expression on his face. Well, I think too. So like the um, the woman that when he was Mister Jackpots at the casino that he helped win all the yes. money tells him about how he changed her life and all this different stuff. And then there's the pianist playing music that kind of rouses him a little bit, and he's eating pie, and he says. One of them says, this is damn good, Pat. And he goes, damn good. Yeah. And he says it like Cooper, too. So he's starting to regain. I think he's continually regaining more of his, the elements of what he is. And I think the music and then the pie and being told about somebody, something, how he did something good for them mm -hmm. is making him realize, like, things aren't right. And, and you know, maybe that's part of the, rev the revelation on his face. And was he an orphan? Was Cooper an orphan? I don't remember. I can't remember. You know, I remember reading something. I think it's like supplemental materials. I don't think it was in the text of the yeah, show. Yeah, I think I remember reading about the that poster, and I don't know if he was an orphan or not. But anyway, I think the Mitchells bring up something—the fact that they were kind of like orphans. Yeah. So maybe, if if that is true, I can't. I just now thought about it, but maybe it is the fact that they brought up being orphans. I saw somebody mention that they said that, um, but they were saying that in relation to the fact. I don't know if it was, but. Brought up the fact that the Blues Brothers were awful, also orphans, <laughs> well, <I laughs> which uh, you know Belushi was in that. But uh, but yeah, like could it been the orphans thing, the yeah. music, the cherry pie, and like he's getting more of his self kind of uh, yeah. back. Um, yeah. So. so let's see, and things that we'll see in the upcoming episodes. So other predictions where we know we before discussed like maybe the um, Becky character was the new Laura Palmer. Based on what's played out so far, I don't think so. I think it's a little bit different scenario because she has like a supportive father, and then at least a mother who loves her. But what? Yeah, but what is her? It is interesting. Role. Like, what, what is, is her, her role, role now, play? other than just kind of providing well, some she, drama? If because... she does drugs, maybe she's an end to the resolution of the story with Red and the drug trade. Maybe we also have the fact that Miriam lived. So will she get connected with uh, Sheriff Truman or Andy or Hawk? or Bobby, or it'll be Chad, mm -hmm. who Lucy is already suspicious of. So we're not sure exactly how Miriam's going to play into it, but there's the Richard Horn stuff. So, you know, there's him stealing from his family, and you have to assume it's going to bring Audrey in at some point if she is, in fact, his mother. And then, you know, with there's all this stuff driving towards the 10-1 and 10-2 dates, and you have Evil Cooper out there who 
might be in possession of some coordinates now or might be in the near future. You have, um, was there a guy, Ray, that's mm -hmm. out there that Evil Cooper is going to want to get, but he knows where Evil Cooper is going and he saw something that might be able to so solve everything. Is he in is he in communication with Philip Jeffries, who is Philip Jeffries really on the side of? Um, you know, does Dougie, or does Cooper, does it have to be 10-1, and does he yeah. have to get rescued from the lodge to become whole? Or will he become whole on his own? Uh, do him and the evil Cooper need to combine? Are they two parts of Cooper split in to two parts, like the pure good and the pure evil? Do they need to be combined? Like, there's all these different things that are out there. G Gordon, too, he was his hand was shaking yeah. after that, and somebody brought up that, like, I guess at the end of season two, when things start getting wild, people's hands were shaking a little bit, too, I yeah. think. Um, uh, I need to go back. It's been a little... It wasn't that long ago when I rewatched the last couple episodes, but... Yeah, so has um, Gordon become, like, you know, because in the book, Secret History of Twin Peaks, it was hinted, you know, or, or mentioned that Gordon had connection to Briggs and was, you know, helping... So, like, how much more does he know about the lodges and a lot of this stuff than what's been let on? And then, like, wouldn't it be weird if, like, the last episode, Chet Desmond shows back up? Yeah, I mean, or, the, um, somebody else brought up, too, like, you know, the vortex thing that happened, yeah. almost happened to Cole. Uh, is that possibly how Chet Desmond disappeared? Yeah. You know, did he get sucked he up in there? Park yeah, he gets sucked up, and then uh, we don't know where he Was is. he at one of those coordinates of how you get into like one of mm -hmm. the lodges or connect to like one of the areas where the woodsmen were? So there's a lot of stuff like that, but I think that we'll see, you know, we're going to have to see more of Dougie. And right now the Mitchum brothers aren't on his case, and the guy that tried to use them to get, um, to get Dougie killed, killed yeah. has now failed again. So... You know, in doing so, he's trying to be kind of clever, but you have um, the Anthony character, the Tom Sizemore character, who is, you know, you see him nervously pacing around the background at work. So he's doing great work as just his background character. Yeah. There's just kind of this sleazy <laughs> guy, like, it's just in here and there. So, you know, when the Mitchums are on the side of Dougie, it may even provide protection yeah. and or support for him. Like, so you have the element of is, you know, was the character that Hutch, the Tim Roth character... Were the people that he was sent off to kill, did they include, um, you know, anybody else? Or, you know, was it just the warden? Is it Warden Dougie? Is Janie somebody? I mean, I doubt it'd be Janie because she is not... Yeah, we didn't get any of her in this episode or Evil Cooper, but, uh, but man, yeah, I, I went... I went. It's uh, Duncan Todd is the one who's, who ordered Anthony Sinclair to go and talk to the Mitchum brothers. So, the, the guy from Mahalo Drive. So Duncan Todd is the one who's failed again. To get Dougie killed, Ike the Spike failed, and then the Mitchums, um, they didn't really fail. They just came around on him and realized he was an ally or not somebody that was against them. So how all that ties together, so I would say Duncan Todd's days are numbered. Mm -hmm. um, and then depending on who the others that Hutch is supposed to kill are, we'll see. But I mean, And two, it's still not clear, does Evil Cooper know that Good Cooper is in the world and not Dougie? Yeah. So... Yeah, like, yeah, has anybody been kind of informed on that? Because he, he saw the the kind of curtains and floor and stuff and then vomited out the garbanzia or whatever it was and, you know, still saw that Bob was with him in prison. So he knows that something happened, but does he know exactly what happened? So that's all stuff I'm assuming we're going to get. I'm super excited as, you know, Sir Episode 11, there's not that many episodes left. And we're going to have to start getting some resolution or answer, but we're seeing all the storylines converging the, towards yeah, each other. Yeah, things are really in high gear again. I mean, Hastings, Hastings got his head blown up, so he's gone, which is kind of sad. Mario came Matthew. crawling out of the woods, you know. Yeah, it's like, so the Richard Horn stuff is going to have to connect. There's the red stuff that's going to probably connect with Bobby in some way because of Shelly and Becky and all these different threads. So, and then you have Carl, who's just out there. Um, you know, Harry awesome. Dean Stanton. Being, being 91, awesome. yeah. So there's all these plot threads are converging, and there's some stuff we got in confirmation of, some stuff we're still waiting for comp confirmation of, characters we're still waiting to see, characters we have seen, like is Jerry Horn still out in the woods? You'd have to think so based on what's happened so far. Is there any significance to him, like, you know, having his foot talk to him, or is he just high out of his mind? So yeah. there's a lot of stuff that we'll probably see in these upcoming episodes, unless they throw us a curveball and give us more of, like, an origin of X, or, you know, maybe... 
Well, instead of getting a definitive the origin of Big Ed, <laughs> maybe maybe the finale instead of getting like a narrative like you know more procedural type thing, the more standard storytelling, the the last episode is more obscure like that and gives you answers through Just imagery the, yeah. and you know little vignettes of story intermixed with very little dialogue. Mm-hmm. So, which would be a a really cool way to a go. A very about, lynching way to do it. Yeah, we'll get, we'll, go big with it. Well, we get, like, so we're on episode, episode 11 just aired. When do you think we'll see the real Cooper? If it's two days from now, uh, I th- some people are theorizing that this week was going to be October 1st in the show. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't so know. It seems like, like they're episodes. probably going to go in the lodge within two episodes. Maybe they had to get his shoes and get and mail them to him. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, well, his then key never did anything. Yeah, that just got to yeah. Ben Horn. He's like, oh, I remember this. Yeah, didn't give it and to. He's the like, police. what's that humming noise again? Yeah. Um, so there's so much stuff. Like I would think within like, so I've seen some people, um, you know, estimating like episode 14. I think that's around about where at least if it doesn't happen, it's getting into motion because there's all these plot lines converging towards that date. It, yeah. And those coordinates, if that's what the ones, if that's the coordinates the Evil Cooper wants. You know, it would be it would be fine if it was like later on like that. It'll be fine whatever they do, I'm sure, even if he never comes back until the last frame of the show. Yeah. You know, but like, it would be cool if some of the storylines got closed off before then. Yeah. And then even though we didn't get into like the last three or four episodes, if we could spend ninety percent of the episodes with Cooper, because yeah. then you still have three hours of Cooper three or four hours of, of him and not just like, okay, we've got eight episodes of him, but only 20 minutes per episode, you know, yeah. features him. They could always go that route or they just give you a lot of that. Um, I don't really necessarily see that happening, but, um, but I, I just love the pacing of the show and it's really never been like slow, slow, but it's really picking up now. Yeah. We haven't got a ton of Andy recently either. Yeah. I, so hopefully he'll be more involved. I think if we had the time, it would be fun to, Take a super cut of all these videos and the theories that we got right and wrong, <laughs> um, and just back to back, like wrong, 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 one right, wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> yeah, so maybe we'll do that at the end of the series. Yeah, so I think that'll wrap up our discussion of episode eleven of Twin Peaks: The Return. So we'll have a next a new video coming out next week to discuss episode twelve. So and keep commenting as well. You know, like seeing yeah. the comments, good or bad. Uh, I mean, if it's stuff about the show, that's great. If it's stuff about our appearance, or whatever, <laughs> feel free, you can ask those questions too. Uh, so but yeah, the theories are more entertaining yeah. to read. The actual theory stuff, uh, yeah. So that'll bring our discussion of episode eleven to a close. So keep an eye out. We'll have a new video next week.